on this episode of Crappy Kings Television. We're on Sardis Lake with legendary crappy guide, John Harrison. You know, since I could probably walk, I've been crappy fishing. Look at that. Does she want that or what? John Harrison has got a great reputation for catching big crappie. He's a full-time guide and he just destroys the tournaments. <laughs> Let me show you something about this one. As thin as you can hook them right here through the lip, right there. I want to talk just a minute about this crappie right here. This is a magnolia crappie. Talk about exciting. It's incredible, man, when a guy's got it dialed in to know where and they bite that fast. Oh, oh, dang. There was one big. Oh. I just lost them so you wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> I'm waiting on my water to get boiling so I can dump them in there. It's progressed over the last 12 years to probably 100, 125 trips a year now. But you fish crappie your whole life? All my life. 12 months out of a year. There's oh, a good boy. One right there. I'm Carl Kalorka, and this is my job. Traveling across North America in search of the best crappie holes while hooking up with some legendary crappie fishermen and a host of colorful characters along the way. Visiting some distinctive destinations and having opportunity to sample some very unique culinary cuisine. You know, a new opportunity, a brand new lake off my bucket list, Sardis Lake in Mississippi. And I get to hook up with a guy, John Harrison. He's got a great reputation for catching big crappie. He's a full-time guide, and he just destroys the tournaments. This is a double minnow rig. It was designed by Ronnie Capps, Steve Coleman. This is a three-quarter. As you can see, real easy and simple to tie on. Pivot. And you got the perfect depth, length, weight, everything. So it's almost like a drop shot rig, except you still got another hook at the bottom. Right. Right. Okay. These are BGJP. They are Bucks Graphite Jig Pole. They're not a trolling pole. Uh, they're not warranted for trolling, but they are tough. Okay. You know, we use them and they come in uh, all sizes. You can get them in uh, 10s, 11s, 12s, 14s. 16, and all different models 18, depending on what you're doing, right? Gotcha. I'm 50 years old. Uh, I started crappie fishing, I guess, when I was about eight or nine years old uh, with my grandmother on Grenada Lake. Uh, she ran a bait shop in Bruce. Uh, she started in, I think they opened the bait shop in 1958 or 57. She kept me a lot. And when she'd get out of the bait shop, she'd, we'd go to Grenada fishing, walk the banks fishing. So, uh, as a, you know, since I could probably walk, I've been crappie fishing. I love it more than anything in the world. We're in the boat, we're going to a spot just like anywhere else for walleye, good bass, crappie, you name it. All the boats congregate together. But John, he pointed out to me, see all those boats over there? We're going way past those boats, get away from the crowds and get into some bigger fish. And the way I hook these minnows, you want to hook them as thin as you can hook them right here through the lip, Okay. right there. So it keeps them alive too, right? Yeah, and they can swim good. See that minnow how he swims free on there? Oh yeah, nice. I retired, I'm a retired police officer, 25 years, and so I guide full time now. Uh, you know, used to I had a full time job and had to guide on the side, but now I, I guide full time here. Uh, I do, you know, summer trips, May and June, July. Most of the time half day trips because it's so hot, you know, the weather, you know, it's it's, by lunchtime, it's so hot you can't hardly stand it out here. So uh, I do a lot of half-day trips in the summertime. When you start on, on these crappy let's say on Sardis like this, and until you figure out how high they are, you just range your depths and stuff? Just change up your depth. Uh, you, you put some a foot off the bottom. Uh, so we're in eight foot of water here, eight, yep. eight point five. Uh, and you, you can put some five feet, uh, four feet. Most of these fish are staying suspended out here. They're about four feet. Okay, well, I'll let you do all that, and I'm just gonna follow your lead. All right. Yeah, man. It's like a guide to trip. <laughs> All right. And a lot of times those bigger fish will thump it up. Yes. They'll knock it up. Yes. And then get go slack. down with it. When they knock it up, and get, you know, then just set the right. hook. Right. That's when they're sucking it in, right? Yep. Suck yes. it in. I saw that yesterday. And sometimes some of them will just hit it, you know, on the go and just, you know, they, yeah. they'll set the hook themselves. Gotcha. Well. And you do the net? Or you like to grab them or you net them too? I just grab them. Oh, you grab them? Okay. Just drag them in. Okay. 
There's fish right there. There's one right there. Look at that. Look at that. Right, oh, he's see, setting he, it up. He came right on the top hook, and he's about oh, two and a half feet deep there. Uh -oh. That's catch and release. Catch and release. So right. what the bigger fish, you still do that? You still fight them all the way in and then yeah, grab them? I just drag them okay. up here. All right. Talk about excitement. He's setting up the rods. The second rod array goes off. We're using three rods each. He's setting up, telling me what we're going to do for the day, why we're out here on this deeper edge and stuff, getting away from the shallow stuff. And the second rod goes off right away. Talk about exciting. It's incredible, man. When a guy's got it dialed in to know where, and they bite that fast. So this is the time of year if you want to catch a real pig at the heaviest point. This is the time of the year, isn't it? Right. Last of March, 1st of April. But you catch those same fish in the fall, mm -hmm. they, and they're fat. They just don't have the eggs in them. Right. They, you know, but you get, you're get you catching the exact same fish. Right. They're bulking up? Bulk, yeah, they're bulked right. up. They're fat. I mean, but, but you can tell, you know, when they... Yes. I mean, and big ones too, eh? Yeah. Wow. 15, 16 inches. Oh, man. Look here, here. Here's a good one, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Nice one, John. <laughs> yep. Nice slab. Nice one, man. Nice one. one. Put him in the box for some pictures? Yeah. Right on. Good stuff. Like that belly. Yes, sir. Wow. Nice crappie. With the man. Uh, I got a lot of childhood memories of a lot of just fishing with corks and minnows. You know, before I ever knew anything about jig fishing or anything, so you know, uh, fishing's come, crappie fishing's come a long way through the years. Uh, you know, just fishing with cane poles and minnows and corks. And, uh, it's I've seen a lot of changes over the years. Slightly hooked. Keep them as lively as possible. You see how these crappie are eating it? They're eating it hard. Shallow that duck. Yeah. Bring it on up. Out there. A little rope back. Uh, just right there, right, right there. there. Oh. They're eating hard, but they're whoa, running with it. Awesome. Oh, he's a nice one too, I think. Just decent one. I think he's a swinger. Hey, John? Oh, yeah, swing him out. A release, sir. Yeah. Like when you're taking customers out and stuff, unless it's really bad weather, you still go out, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. They understand. If it's that, lightning, right? I ain't going. Right. But now, far as wind, yes, we don't let no wind stop us. We, yes. We have to put full five wind socks or yes. five log chains. It ain't gonna stop us. And you yeah. know these boats are safe. And so, yep. Oh man! Oh man! Let me fix you, man. Dang. Stay down a little bit too. Darn. We're bearing the rod tip. Oh, wow. It's about time to catch one. Mm-hmm. Man. Another nice one, eh? Wow. Now let's watch your technique. There you go. Another good one, eh? Man, oh man. Sardis. See those hooks? Yes. They, got they stay him. in there, don't they? Yeah. I know someone on the other him. one there. Throw them in the level? Another pan fire? Another pan fire. Look at that. Really thick through the back too, aren't yeah, they? Really thick. Ah. Man. See? See how thick their backs. Yeah. yeah. Some nice fillets there, isn't yeah. there? Look at the sea. She's not far off. Yeah. She's about ready. Yeah. As soon as that water warms up a little. Right on. I'll put them in the box for you. In the box. Sardis fillets. Boy, when you lift them up, they got some weight to them. Love it. Get in there, girl. It's fine eating. Let's keep going. I've been guiding about uh, approximately 12 years. I remember the first year I guided, I had five trips, and probably the second year, 10, and it's progressed over the last 12 years to I do probably 100, 125 trips a year now. I mostly do most of my guiding on Grenada. I do some here at Sardis. Uh, wherever they bite, I go. Uh, any, Arca Butler, whatever. Probably my busiest times, February, March, and April. Everybody wants to come catch a springtime fish. Uh, September, October, November is uh, 
is just as good as the springtime. If I had one to pick, that would probably be the fall of the year. You know, the, the, the bite stays consistent. You know, the, the weather's mild, it's, it's good fishing. So now as the spawn gets more and more, will you go even shallower? Shallower, huh? You can okay. go all the way in, in, you know, three or four foot away, even two foot. That's what they want. They want the they, warmth? Warm, warmer, the, yeah, the closer you get in, the warmer that water will be. Yes. The shallower you get that's in. That's what they want, right? That's right. And you right. can probably go in there now and catch some males. These females are staged back off out here in okay. seven, eight, nine, ten foot of water, just waiting to move in. Right. So that's what we're fishing, staging females. That's, that's what we're catching ah, right here, okay. just staging up females out here. Gotcha. Like chances are that guy's up there fishing for males. Probably. Or thinking the females are there. Right. Right? I got gotcha. you. Nice. Here's one right here. Uh oh, Ooh. swing and a miss. See, that's great because sometimes I'd fish areas too and only get smaller ones, wondering where the big ones are this time of year. Obviously staging, right on. Very impressive because this guy focused in on those suspended fish away from the crowds. Oh man, oh man. The wind's picking up, but the fish are still biting. Stick around, I'll be right back after this commercial break with John Harrison, Sardis Lake. You know, and it's just like bass fishing with a really good fisherman, you're always learning. I don't care how old you are, from 18 to 80, if you stop learning, that's when you stop fishing or stop catching. And with John, he just showed me some more stuff that I can put in my arsenal to catch more and bigger crappie in other places. Here's one. There's oh, a good boy. one right there. Yep. Oh, nice one, John. Uh, that, I'll you show you something. <laughs> Let me show you something about this one. That's a magnolia crappie. Look at that thing. That's a black one. Look at that stripe running up his back. All the way up his back. All the way wow. on his chin. Let me take pictures of that one. Yeah, man. Yeah. That is cool. That's what they call it, magnolia? Wow. We'll take some it's pictures of here, man. Crappie, but it's just, did it strike? Yes. i never seen that. This is a magnolia crappie. If you can see here the stripe coming all the way up it. Uh, these crappie here do not reproduce. This is one out of about, I've been guiding since the 1st of January. This is the very first one that I've caught out of probably 900 or 1,000 fish. They, there's a few of these in, in the lake, but they're, they are, they're very hard to come by. It's a mix between a white and a black, and it's a, uh, it's a, they call it a magnolia crappie, but it's, it's uh they do not reproduce. Had a pretty good wind change here in the last 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Yes. It's went from northeast to north to northwest. It's a 10 foot coated log chain. You'll see I got uh, knots tied in it, about a 10 foot spaces here. And if I have to put two out, I put one on each side to keep them exactly, keep my boat moving exactly the same. Instead of putting one longer and one short, it cocks you at the side like that. So, and I think one, one here is probably gonna hold us here. So we're good with just one right now. There's fish right there. Get him, get him. There you go. I think he's good. a good one. Yeah, just flew slow. There you go. There, nice. Look at that belly on that thing. Oh boy. Look at there. Look at that. Did she want that or what? Yeah. Oh boy. That never coming off, was it? Hey? Eh? No. <laughs> Where the hook's at. <laughs> that's pretty good close too, isn't it? And yeah, she's blowed up good. Or she's under 12 probably, eh? Oh, she's probably 12 inches. Yeah. But she looks like she should spawn. Wanna let her go? Yeah. Okay. I'm going with it. I'm here for the fun, man. Fun. It is fun. But the way they're pulling here, it's awesome. I've been tournament fishing since about 2004. I fished my first tournament on Grenada. Uh, I qualified there uh, by myself, and I guess I'd done it just just to try it, you know. And, and uh, once I tried it, I loved it. Since then, I never looked back. I just kept fishing, you know, and, and I've really enjoyed it through the years, and it's inspired me a lot. And I, I just like the competition. And, you know, see that fish? Oh, took both. Maybe you come back with one of these. Big slab. Oh, geez, eh? A nice fish. <laughs> that a boy, John. Hey, he came back that way. 
They think maybe in a school of them. Eater? Short. Nah, he's probably heat. Mm. Crappy. It's kind of hard to turn away your guiding when you're busy. It is. It is. But, you know, that's my busy time of the year. Yes. Springtime here. Because it's never guaranteed tournaments. Nothing right? guaranteed. That's yeah. right. But, but guiding, it's money in the bank. That's right. right. You know, it's pretty hard work, this guiding every oh, day. Oh, yeah, man. You know, getting up at 4 o'clock, 4.30 yep. every morning. Yep. It's, uh, and you never really know who's going to be in your boat, right? Uh-uh. And you don't know, you know. It's, it's going to be a hard day or a long day. <laughs> yeah, it could be a... You know, fish ain't biting or something. You know, you just, it, every day it's, it gets, it's pretty, it's not real easy. Yes. Because it doesn't really matter who you are. If you love fishing, you love crappie. Yep. Okay? Just, man. Oh, you bugger. <laughs> wow. It went up. Boom. Knocked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, swinger, isn't he? Yeah, swing him on. Up high. I'm here, you. Oh, oh. Sort of swung him. Sort of swung him. A sort of swinger. Sort of swinger. <laughs> Female, too, isn't it? Yeah. Just a little bit smaller, right? Eh? You think she's 12? Oh, I'm pretty sure so. Yeah. She buried it good. I thought she was big. Oh, yeah. Reel it up a little bit. Like, like that? A little more. Right there. Okay. Whoa! Over 12. About 12 and 8. Yeah. Ah. Look at that belly. Yes. You think we should let her go? Okay. Yeah. The belly's on. Nice fish. Gave me a thrill. There was one fair. Oh, right there. Oh. Mm. I don't know. I can't stay hooked up with one. <laughs> Now, if you're saying that, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I just lost him so you wouldn't feel bad. <laughs>You know, I've seen a lot of changes in these lakes. A lot of structures changed. Used to the lakes full of a lot of green stuff, you know, a lot of brush, a lot of willow trees. You know, as a kid growing up, I remember fishing a lot of big trees out in the lake. You know, all that's gone now. Mostly what's here is just man-made structure. Uh, steak beds, brush piles, whatever, you know, they put in the lakes. Uh, of course, we catch a lot of suspended fish here, you know, on, this, on these trolling rigs. Here's one up there. Get him, get him. There you go. How oh, good is he? Yeah. Swinger? No. Nope. Is oh, he? Yeah. Yeah, bring him up. All right. Now, some places people would like those, won't they? That size. Mm -hmm. But not Mississippi. Let's see if he's illegal. Start his fish. And he is. Yeah? Yeah. Flays. Perfect. Sardis. <laughs> I'm getting my fill of Mississippi crappie. And I haven't even been to Grenada yet. What's in the store? Oh, me. <laughs> I think a lot of the people of crappie fishing like this is a relaxing atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Just sitting back, hey, waiting. Waiting on a bite. And boom. Here's one. Oh, nice one, too. Yeah. Thick fish, man. I love it. Love it, John. Awesome, buddy. <whistles> For the skillet. Uh. You found these nomads out here. Yes. Not too fat either. Good for flaying, isn't yeah. it? I'll measure. It's okay. Probably okay. Now that was a treat. A new fisherman who knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. Just a good old boy showed me this connect from Canada how to catch crappie on Sardis Lake. I'm looking forward to going back. We all know a crappie road trip to Mississippi is not complete without a taste of southern culinary cuisine and a classic crawfish boil at 333 Restaurant. Hi y'all, welcome to 333. My name's Jennifer Waldo, and I'm gonna show you around the restaurant today to show you why you should come and eat here today. Come on, I'll show you the kitchen. Y'all come on, we're gonna go see the crawfish. All right, Gary, they wanna see our crawfish. 
You have to soak them first. That's a pretty good side one, then. Yeah. Well, a lot of people like them big ones. I'm waiting on my water to get boiling so I can dump them in there. Probably take about 10 minutes. And they start coming, and I'll cut it off down some, then I'll uh, let them soak for a little while. That's what gets all the juice inside it, crawfish. The old guy said he went to Louisiana and he said he likes the crawfish up here and he better need to Louisiana. These fresh boiled crawfish need some seasonings before our feast. And how long is they stay in there? Do they sell them? Do they sell them? Hey, I'll be bagging them up here in a few minutes. <laughs> Nothing like good old southern hospitality and a plate fresh of boiled crawfish end our crappy road trip. Man, oh man, look at the wind. That's one thing in Mother Nature gives you in fishing, the wind, nasty. Other than lightning, can't stand it. But fishing with guys like John, still figure it out. They just know how to catch them, doesn't matter. But on behalf of John and myself, in Sardis Lake, Mississippi, we'll see you next time looking for these big, fat slabs. Let's go. Experience Mississippi in those awesome Sardis Lake crappie with full-time guide John Harrison. 662-983-5999. Uh, crappie Kings Television in association with Art Rule the Water. B&M Poles, wherever fishing takes you. Roadrunner Fishing Lures. Visit us at crappiekings.com.